information. Um, the, the department did submit their APR. Um, there were errors which were noted. And, and from the APR, there were material findings which were identified during the audit that were not corrected. And these were reported in our audit report. Which takes me to the second section, uh, Chair. For this year, for this audit, we focus on program two. Um, so there on the slides, we're showing the results of the process of the of the two years, which is 18, 19, and 19, 20. So you will note here the, the graphs as you see there represents that um, the the reports which were presented for us for, for audit did have findings. So in both years. So the main areas uh, where we had concerns on within the program chair is, is on those indicators, the percentage of overcrowding in the correctional centers, and also the number of new bed spaces which were created. So on the percentage of overcrowding chair, we, there, were, there were lack of accurate and complete records to support the reported achievement. And the number of bed spaces, um, then the achievements was not consistent with the planned target. So those were the main issues that we have, the material findings that we had on, on performance chair. Then looking at uh, compliance with legislation, the main five non-compliance which were identified, which there they were, they were material findings that we had on management of procurement and contracts, the prevention of irregular expenditure which talks to the qualification, non-implementation of, of systems to monitor progress uh, with the annual performance plan, and also around consequence management where we were unable to obtain sufficient appropriate audit evidence that disciplinary steps were taken. This chair on around the consequence management, it talks to um, irregular expenditure, fruitless and unauthorized cases. Those are the, those are those are our focus area. So once again, even on the on, on the bars chair, you, you will notice that this is the same same issues that we had. We had findings even in the previous year around this area. On the status of internal control chair for this year, looking at the three categories around leadership, financial performance management, and also governance, you will notice that from a from an over oversight responsibility, which is consistent from 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 prior year, there was this intervention required there. On the action plans, uh, there was a slight Im improvement in the sense that there was there was a reduction in also in the number of of uh, of, fi of the findings and also the action plans that were implemented by the department. But however. We still have um, we still have a qualification, so there's still some work that has to be done from the department's point of view. Um, on, on on the financial performance management, chair, just touching on the proper uh, record keeping, the daily management controls, and the review of non-compliance, those are still the areas that we have. And from the governance point of view, from a risk management and audit committee, there was there was an improvement this year. Um, but however, there's still some areas of concern. There's still some improvement that still needs to be made in that regard. Then from the assurance uh, providers, the first levels which talks to senior management, the accounting officer and executive authority from the color coding that is used chair. So every color is, is also explained at the bottom chair if you if, if maybe you wanna follow and, and get a more understanding what does each color mean. Um, so from financial man, from, from senior management, we had a, a red, which means um, that there's still no some areas of concern from the still some of improvements that still needs to be made. Um, the executive regard. authority, we in, we conclude that uh, there's some assurance being provided from the second level, which is the internal audit, there's some assurance being provided, and also the audit committee. Moving to the financial health and financial management chain. The three main areas which we, we looked at, which is around the revenue management, the assets and, and liability management, and also the cash management. So on all the three areas, there are some areas of concern which needs to be looked into around wealth of so revenues, around collection of debt, and also um, looking at the cash management, the negative cash balance, which, which, which I think needs to be looked at as a year end when we performed our audit. municipal accounts, which amounted to about 460,000. Then from a investigation in terms of the cases of fruitless and wasteful, uh, for in 1819, we, we, we reported that there were no cases that were investigated around the fruitless. However, this year in the 1920, there was, a, there was 69% of the cases had not been, had not been investigated. Moving to irregular expenditure share, from the investigations point of view, the two the, from the two year 1819 and 1920, 
um, in 1890, not all cases were investigated. But however, this year in, in 1920, we, we had in, it, we couldn't get adequate evidence to enable us to verify whether the, the investigations did take place from an irregular uh, expenditure point of view. You will note chair on the right hand side that in the, in the prior year, irregular expenditure was reported at, in, for at 159 million. Um, this year is just over a billion. Um, this increased share in irregular expenditure comes about um, the qualification which we had last year, which was on, on, on splitting off orders on irregular. So management did go back and, um, and, and, and revise the, the, revisit the population, which gave rise to those cases which were identified by management. The nature of other irregular expenditure which were identified chair, um, is around which and all these categories which I'm going to touch on had, have not been uh, disclosed by the department in the financial statements, which is around the competitive bidding process which was not followed, non-compliance with the CETA Act, the three price quotations not obtained, and contract variations in excess of 20%. Um, on, on this slide, Chair, we, we're just uh, indicating how the, the cases which were reported by management relating to SEM misconduct, um, all of them, it's just consistent even with last year, they took longer than, than three months. In 1819, we reported there were 10 cases relating to SEM misconduct, and this year it was 10 possible fraudulent cases which were reported by the department. I think then chairs as we indicated the second part of the of the of, of the presentation will then be explained in the in the other session. But I think maybe something to mention, uh, chair, just linking to the material regularities was that for this year we had not identified uh, any material regularity. There were irregularities as as I explained from a irregular expense.
Chair, can I continue then with the other slides? Um, seeing that you still have some time. Yeah, continue. Thank you. The next slide talks about root causes. So having done the audit, we then um, look back and summarize the root causes behind the findings that we have raised for, for this audit. So the three main root causes that we identified were first, the slow or no response to improving the key controls or addressing the risk areas that we had um, indicated to management in the prior year. So although management did put in place an action plan, but it was not fully effective to address all the issues that were raised. And that is why we see some recurring issues uh, being uh, raised again in the current year. The second one is inadequate uh, consequences for poor performance or transgressions. As we also indicated earlier in the slides, we looked at consequence management in relation to fruitless and wasteful expenditure and irregular expenditure. And we determined that uh, there was no movement or there was low movement in terms of investigating those cases. And as a result, then um, steps were not taken against officials that contravened legislation. The third one is instability or vacancies in key positions. We have seen that there are some vacancies that um, have been left and not filled for longer periods. And that also um, uh, has an impact on the outcomes that we are seeing. In the next slide, we then uh, give some recommendations to the accounting officer on how to deal with the, the findings that we are raising. The first one is that the accounting officer must design and implement the action plan to resolve audit findings. So the, the key part is, is implementation of that plan because uh, as much as it can be developed, but they need to, to also implement it to resolve the issues. Secondly, management must follow up on the progress made with implementation of the plan, like I indicated, and they also must fill the key vacant positions that we've noted that uh, are part of the root causes. And lastly, to implement consequence management for irregular and and wasteful expenditure. Honorable Chair, we also have some recommendations to, to this committee um, that uh, you can also implement as part of your oversight role. The first one is to um, uh, uh, provide oversight into the implementation of the action plans to address the audit matters. So that action plan that the accounting officer is going to develop should also be brought to this committee to indicate the progress in addressing the audit matters. And the second one is to monitor implementation of consequence management. This slide chair just highlights some of the key efforts that we put in place as the Auditor General to try and assist accounting officers in implementing our recommendations. The one that I want to highlight is the status of records review, which we do as an early warning system to assist the accounting officer in implementing the recommendations. So we draw the attention of the accounting officer to the risky areas that they need to address before they submit financial statements and also the annual performance report, trying to assist them uh, to deal with the issues that might be picked up during the audit process. The next slide, uh, Chairperson, deal with preventative controls. This is again another uh, effort that we've put in as Auditor General, again, to try and assist accounting officers to build a good control environment. Um, so Chair, I'll just highlight briefly what uh, preventative controls is all about. We have issued some preventative control guides that will be also be shared with you as the committee so that you can use those guides as part of your oversight uh, processes. So what we were explaining in those guides is that the, all entities have certain business processes. And what we are saying is that all these business processes should include or they must build preventative controls with, within all those systems in order to prevent errors and also to prevent non-compliance with legislation. By doing so, entities then will be able to build a strong control environment and, the, and therefore allowing the, the, the assurance providers to be able to provide the necessary assurance in those being senior management, the accounting officer and the governance structures because failure to implement or design the right preventative controls 
has certain consequences, and we are highlighting those consequences at the bottom of the screen. And those may be material irregularities and poor audit outcomes. It can also result in financial losses to the department, costly investigations, disciplinary processes, as well as litigation, which can be avoided if the entity does put in place proper preventative controls. You have one minute. Thanks, Chair. I'm, I'm wrapping up. So like I indicated, we will be sharing these guides with you so that you can use them in your oversight uh, processes to try and, and, and assist the accounting officers in implementing the correct preventative controls. So Chairperson, um, these preventative controls guides um, have been distributed by the office and are available and will be made available to yourselves as well to assist you in your oversight function. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Office of the Auditor General, uh, Chair of the Internal Audit Committee. Thank you very much, uh, Chairperson. And thank you very much, AG, for the, for the report. Chairperson, in the uh, annual report, we have included the report of the audit committee. However, I want to bring this to the attention of the audit, uh, of the, uh, of us, of the portfolio committee to say uh, we are concurred with the Auditor General's opinion and we are supporting uh, Auditor General in the recommendations. And also to, um, to say, yes, we have noted slight improvement in terms of what management has implemented. However, there is still much that got to be done in terms of us, us to turn a corner. We have recommended to management to come up with a robust uh, audit action plan. And we have been saying that every year and a chairperson, you might ask me what is the difference, but what we have said to management, they must look at the root causes. I think some of the root causes have, have already been identified by AG on matters that are, have been uh, raised by the audit, uh, audit report to say, where did we go wrong, Chair? And we also recommended that in terms of the the issue on irregular and wasteful expenditure. We need to look at our consequence management system as to whether does it really yield the results that you want to. We recommended to the uh, to the accounting officer for them to look at the systems that they have put in place. They do have um, other systems that they have put in place, but the question is, uh, we do see that. Um, the, 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 the process of consequence management according to accounting officer is moving, but what we said uh, is the impact thereof, because we, we have um, where there are recoveries, but the recoveries are so limited and uh, the, the system is there, but um, the, the benefit of the system got to be tested and uh, accounting officer is aware of that. And the other issue that we recommended, um, I'll put, I'll talk to the other recommendation that I think you can look into. Uh, the code, uh, code enforcement unit and, and departmental investigation unit and even HR from the disciplinary part of it, they need to work together because um, consequence management is not only about punishment. We also need to check as to why are we finding ourselves in this situation. So the recommendation that I will discuss as well with the, the commissioner is for us to see as to whether can't we have a committee that deals with the, the discipline, which is normally called disciplinary board. I've seen in other uh, departments that I'm sitting, they have uh, established that disciplinary board just for us to be able to complete the cycle of, um, of a consequence management. And further, Chair, I'm glad that AG has given you some key commitments, the two key commitments. I've recommended to management that we need to have a robust key commitments framework as well, where all the stakeholders, including the oversight, we have a role that we play in this. And I, uh, I, will, uh, I will submit that uh, key commitments framework. We might not implement it this year, but from management side, we'll try and implement because in the report of AG, there are key commitments that they have already identified. And if we follow that, because they are from the status of records review process that they did, it will assist the process chairperson. And then from the internal audit, we have approved the strategic uh, plan, uh, risk-based plan that includes some of the, the areas that 
has as identified here. So I think uh, we will really try to implement the systems. And I'm glad that we have this uh, this line of communication. And um, I am apologizing that the other time I could not attend the meeting. And I promise that I will attend all the meetings and uh, we will from the audit, uh, audit committee report on quarterly basis on matters that are raising, uh, raised by AG and on other matters because it's not only about looking at the audit opinion, we need to put the clean administration systems in place. Thank you, Chairperson. Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Masita. If I may just ask you, uh, a very basic question before I allow other members. The level of experience of the senior executive, it ranges for how many years to how many years generally on that. If you were chairperson in the organization. Yes. Uh, normally they say between five to seven years, so I'm not sure <laughs> whether the answer is correct. Okay. No, thank you very much. Um, I've noted the following members, Honorable Horn, Honorable Jim Self. I had also seen Honorable Jale, but I don't see her anymore. Um, let's start with Honorable Horn. Uh, Wilma as well, Chair. Honorable uh, Nibu Trachan. Honorable Noma Temba Chela is back. Uh, she, will, uh, she will summarize. She will be the last one. Honorable Hon. Thank you, Chair. Uh, I really want to just ask two questions to the AG based on their this morning. The first is they talk about an early warning system uh, which should enable DCS to, to address those issues pointed out during previous audits. But yet we are faced with a report this morning to say that the, the same issues regarding irregular expenditure, the fact that it occurs, but secondly, the fact that it's not properly dealt with by DCS that, that that situation is unchanged. So the question to the AG really then is, is, please explain to us how the early warning system works so that we as a portfolio committee can understand how it is possible then that the early warning system does not bring the necessary results. So that's the first question. The second question I want to ask Chair is that uh, the one very interesting finding by the AG also in respect of, of irregular expenditure and consequences to irregular expenditure is the fact that they say that last year they were quite sure that no investigation of irregular expenditure related possible misconduct took place. And this year it is a slightly amended finding to the effect that they say there's insufficient evidence of disciplinary steps. Uh, so I want to understand what they mean with, with this finding that there's insufficient evidence uh, to the best of, 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 in simple terms, in practical terms, it should really not be difficult for anybody to prove that there was an investigation of, of possible misconduct and that there was a disciplinary hearing where if somebody was found guilty consequences by way of sanctions and penalties were imposed. So uh, uh, from where I'm sitting, I'm really struggling to, 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 to in my own mind, create the possibility where, where there could be insufficient evidence. What does it mean in practical terms? Does it mean that there's no record, no, no reports, no recordings of either investigations or disciplinary hearings? that there's no, nothing on record regarding um, consequences in terms of penalties and sanctions imposed if, there's, if there was uh, findings of guilt on the part of certain officials. I, I can't understand how that can happen. So if the AG can just in practical terms explain to us what they mean with insufficient evidence, I, I think we would have a clearer picture as to what went on at DCS in, the, in that financial year. Thank you. 
Thank you very much, Honorable Sir. Thank you, Chairperson. Um, my questions are similar to my colleague, uh, Honorable Horn, but I, I look at these um, findings and the depressing part about them is that those findings continue year after year after year. And some of them are so easily avoided. For example, there's fruitless and wasteful expenditure incurred as a result of interest paid to, relating to late payment. I mean, how difficult is it to create a system that would enable whoever's responsible within the department to provide payments on time to avoid late penalties? That you know goes unexplained by anyone, not this year alone, but previous years as well. Um, and that brings me to consequence management. I'd very much like to know from the department at some point, whether any consequence management has taken place, whether anybody has been held to account, because until such time as people are held to account, this thing will carry on year after year after year as it has for the last, I don't know how many years, been the situation with the Department of Correctional Services. And I, I'd very much like to know by, by the name of the person concerned, and the sanction invoked, what consequence management has taken place for irregular, wasteful, uh, and uh, irregular expenditure? Thank you, Chair. Thank you, uh, honorable members. I'm proposing the following. Let's make uh, this uh, to be more conversational. Um, I've noticed that uh, honorable James Sir, uh, most of the questions, um, would be better uh, answered by the department. Um, so we would not wait for the department uh, to present when there are questions, because I mean, we have gone through all these reports. When there are questions directed at the department in the presence of the AG, they would ask, they would answer, and the AG would answer. So that we, 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 we are in a better, space to make, uh, to form an impression when both parties are here and how they answer our questions. So it's not going to be an issue that uh, it's only the AG that is going to answer. Questions that are pointed at the department, the department will have to answer immediately. Honorable new vote. Good morning, Chairperson. Thank you very much. And thank you to the AG for their report. Most of the questions I wanted the department to answer, but at the same time, I wanted the AG's perspective as well. If we go to slide 19, 18 and 19 of the AG's presentation, there's a red part that says, all cases not investigated, 2018 to 2019, and then 2019, 2020, 69% not investigated. And the same with slide 19. So both, both um, says not all cases investigated where you say inadequate evidence. Now the inadequate evidence um, to enable verification. So I would like to know um, if the AG can explain to us what they mean about that. What, what does it really, really mean? Because um, will they never be able to get the evidence? Um, will they never be able to investigate? And then on the other side from the department, I want to ask the department, why is this the case? Why can't we get the verification of evidence? What does that mean? And then um, the AG recommendation. The AG's perspective, will the department be able to achieve the AG's recommendations as stated? The reason why I'm asking the question is that the areas of concern has been since 2016 going, you know, onwards. So 2015 it was fine, but then subsequently qualified reports, etc. So what is the AG's perspective? Does, will the department be able to achieve these recommendations from the AG? 
And then the department, what is the AG's perspective? What does the department need assistance with from the AG's office or any other body to be able to um, implement the, the recommendations made by the AG? Thank you, Chairperson. Thank you very much, Honorable Jana. Thank you, Chairperson. Uh, good morning, colleagues. Uh, Chairperson, I have a few questions. I think some, uh, most of the questions that uh, I wanted to touch on, uh, my colleagues uh, just uh, mentioned them, but I think I'm just going to ask on uh, some few also just in addition, because my question would be to the chairperson of the internal audit that uh, there's a statement that uh, she, she said in, 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 in towards the end that much still has to be done to assist this situation. And then she also mentioned the issue of plans that has to be uh, uh, done. My question is that Chairperson, it's just like uh, uh, the same question with my other colleagues. <laughs> uh, what kind of uh, plans that will really help to deal with the situation? Because uh, I would think that other plans has always been be there uh, to assist because this situation as my colleagues uh, just mentioned that uh, these things, they date back to about 2016 and all that, even before that maybe. But where we are now, we, 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 we're talking in terms of saying, Chair, even last year, we were facing the very same situation. Uh, I want to know what kind of plans uh, really that uh, the, the auditor is, 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 is talking about here so that we may, we, we may know because uh, in, in one of the recommendations is that uh, we need to also to up just in simple terms, our oversight. What kind of an oversight that will help these officials or our officials? Because I see us uh, not getting better every day, chairperson. That is the first one. So the other one, Chairperson, I want to find out from uh, the auditor, the office of the auditor, that uh, what are the reasons sometimes that uh, the department is giving when, because this report, I don't think it, it started with them. What are the reasons that they are really giving to them uh, as to why is this situation not a, uh, resolved. And then the department, Chairperson, why I, are they not dealing with this issue of consequences ma management once and for all? Is it because maybe it's the officials, some of these officials are friends or what? Can they really tell us? Because we cannot be coming here talking about invest investigations, uh, step not taken, uh, investigation, investigation not taken every year. Can the department assist us? Do they have the willingness to resolve these matters? Chairperson. And also lastly from the, 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 the chairperson and the, in the office of the auditor, I just want to know what is the attitude of, of the official or our officials in terms of correcting the situation? Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, Honorable Jale. Um, Office of the Auditor General, uh, can we go back to the slides that deals with assurance by senior management accounting officers and executive authority? Um, if that might take time, um, you are saying that there is limited assurance from senior management 
limited assur uh, in fact, no, uh, no assurance from the accounting officer and the executive authority provides some assurance. I would tell, what do you mean? What were you expecting? What was not meant? I do think that um, um, uh, that question is at the core of the issues that uh, honorable members were raising in particular honorable Jale. Um, I would also like to ask a question to the accounting officer. Firstly, is the acting CFO present or the CFO? He is chairman. Is the CFO or oh, they are present? Okay. The Auditor General says has problems with the usefulness of performance information and compliance with, with key legislation. Now, if there is a problem with the usefulness of the performance information, why should we believe the report that you have, that you are about to present? What is it worth for? Um, no systems of declaring irregular expenditure. Uh, there is no reliable reporting of achievements. And for me, that is the biggest disclaimer. So why should we waste time and listen to your annual performance plan when clearly and uh, there is a problem with the reliability of that information. And it said that your annual performance plan, your annual performance report has errors. That is from the Auditor General. Um, lack of accurate and complete records to support reported achievements. I mean, for me, that statement alone gives me serious, serious problems as to why should I read something that uh, it might, it's possible that it might not be true at all. Why should we allow you to report to South Africans um, um, if there are these serious gaps? Because it's quite possible that that information, whatever achievements you might be telling us, there is nothing backing them. Um, at worst, they might not be true. At best, if they are true, there is no there's no basis, there's no support, there's no support for for the for that particular conclusion. What should we tell South Africans? about I know you generally will blame National Treasury, um, but the report of the Auditor General says that there is a possibility that you might not be, be able to pay, to pay your creditors. So if you are a state-owned company or a private-owned company, you would be said you're insolvent. Now, there has been the issue that honorable uh, members have raised, um, little progress in dealing with consequence management, especially on irregular expenditure which runs into millions of rents. I mean, for me, between you and the Department of Justice, 
I'm not sure uh, who is the best in competing for the for being the worst. I have no time, generally. I have no time for plans and action plans that people develop knowingly that they are not going to implement them. I asked uh, the chairperson of the audit committee that on average, your management has got how many years of experience? Because with respect, issues that are being suggested to you that you must do are not even 101. Now, if you have people, as she said, that they are between five and seven years, others I think even more, and you still have to be told to do things that are very basic. Issue things that they're not even operational, they're clerical. The question that you must ask, answer us, are you fit for purpose? This 22, over 22 billion rands, is it safe in your hands? We can't have a country that is facing mm -hmm. such financial challenges and such an amount of money is placed in the hands of people who are just failing to do mere clerical things. There is nothing spectacular, nor difficult about the recommendations that the Auditor General has been making to you over time. There are two issues. It's either you have no competency at all of implementing them, which means you are not fit for purpose or you don't want to implement them. Then in that case, there is going to be a strategic misfit between the country and yourself. Over to you. Let's start with the Auditor General. Thank you, Honorable Chairperson and members for those questions. I will start off and then I will hand over uh, to Mr. Uh, Madolo then to also um, respond to, um, to some uh, specific questions. Uh, the first question was the Honorable Member wanted a bit more information about what is it that we do throughout the, the audit uh, process. Uh, it's also covered on that one slide which um, uh, Mr. Tetsi um, um, dealt with. So we do what we call the status of records review um, uh, uh, during the audit process. We normally do that uh, to a large extent during the planning of the audit already, where we basically look at um, the status of the records. Uh, we look at key reconciliations, key controls. We do a follow-up on, on the prior audit findings. And we then prepare a report, which is then discussed with management and, 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 and with the accounting officer, where we then already highlight uh, areas which we believe needs attention, uh, key controls that we believe is not in place, key issues that needs to be focused on. That then gives already an opportunity for management to get a formal report to enable uh, them to, uh, to focus uh, on correcting whatever is needed to be corrected. Then we also do an interim audit. So during the interim audit, we then actually go and select transactions all over the country at the various um, centers that we audit and even head office. We actually do uh, audit supply chain management transactions and we issue a management report to management, which gives management then the details. Uh, again, um, it is uh, uh, the purpose is first of all, uh, to help us to, um, to um, uh, progress in the audit. 
But secondly, the, this, the uh, advantage for management is that they also get in time feedback on what is actually happening on the ground with the day-to-day -day transaction. Um, I will let them, Mr. Mardos, there was a few questions ab ab about um, the um, consequence management. And um, I, I think I will, at, at, at the end, hand over to Mr. Mandolo just to, to, to then uh, give you more details about the, um, the uh, uh, co consequence management um, that um, will help you a lot. Um, there were specific questions on slide 18 and 19. Um, and that is also the ones which Mr. Madola will give um, um, more, uh, more details uh, on. So uh, there was a specific question um, about the recommendations and, and, and to say, so what is maybe needed in more practical terms. So if one look at the areas where we still have significant audit findings, it's, it's mainly in the area of supply chain management and in the area of performance information. So if you look at the area of supply chain management, uh, typically what uh, should happen in that environment is that there should be uh, controls in place to make sure that whenever procurement is done, that it is done within the, the rules and regulations and prescripts. Uh, and then of course it would be important, uh, if procurement happens uh, in, in many cases in a decentralized environment, and that is where management plays an important role uh, to actually uh, make sure that there's enough training that is taking place, that internal audit focuses enough on those uh, specific transactions to highlight uh, any non-compliances. And then very important uh, in, in, in the uh, procurement processes is planning. There's many large contracts that, um, that are in place and it's very important that those contracts are managed on a regular basis uh, to determine well in advance when will a contract come to an end uh, because the supply chain management processes to go out on tender takes fairly long uh, and that those processes can be put in place uh, so that by the time that the, the old contracts end, the new process uh, should be in place. So there's also a training element which is very important uh, because it's important that whoever is working in the supply chain management arena should actually be um, well familiar uh, with all the supply chain management uh, prescripts. Um, when it comes, to, then there must also be systems in place for identifying irregular expenditure. Uh, and it's very important because procurement uh, happens uh, uh, all over uh, the correctional uh, centers. And there should also be a system in place for management of performance information. And, and, and we believe that if the system can improve for managing performance information, that will actually result in a situation where the performance information that are reported is accurate and, 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 and complete. So it's a focus on, 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 a, on, a, on, a, on a, a, a well-managed system for performance information. Um, then um, there was a specific question um, that, that um, dealt with the, um, the various le uh, uh, levels of, um, uh, it was, uh, uh, of um, um, uh, control um, and uh, it's specifically then the role of leadership and the role of management. Uh, that was the, the, uh, the question of the of the of the chairperson, uh, where we say assurance provided uh, by management is is read, and assurance provided by the accounting officer is read. So it is it is important to 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 understand the the um, the, the the role of each of the various um, uh, role players when it comes to uh, assurance uh, pro uh, providers. So the first level of assurance providers is, is management. Management is, is, is supposed to, on a daily and weekly and monthly basis, make sure that uh, the internal controls and the policies and procedures uh, of the entity is actually documented, uh, is effective, and make sure that they're actually implemented on a daily, uh, on a daily basis. Uh, from an, a, a, a senior leadership and, and, and accounting officer's perspective, it is important uh, to exercise oversight 
to make sure that uh, those policies and procedures are, are then um, effectively implemented and that if not, that the necessary steps are taken. Of course, also important at that level to ensure that vacancies are filled uh, and that consequence management actually, um, actually takes, takes place. So the department should have mechanisms uh, to, to control that on a, on a regular basis. Uh, one of the key uh, mechanisms that a, the, the accounting officer can use is actually internal audit, whose key focus is to actually um, focus on the implementation of, 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 of controls. Uh, therefore, they should follow a risk-based uh, audit approach. So if we look at uh, the DCS environment, uh, one would then typically want to see a situation where a lot of internal audit focus will be on the supply chain management environment as well as in the performance um, system environment. So in the case of performance information, there's a quarterly reporting process. So it would be important for internal audit to actually audit the quarterly reports uh, and to verify it and to make sure that they're accurate and complete. And if not, to already report at that point in time to management uh, for, further, uh, for further action. Uh, Chairperson, I will, I will stop there and then I will hand over to Mr. Madolo just to talk about the questions on consequence management. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, Lawrence. Um, sorry, sorry, young uh, okay. The previous okay. person who was speaking, you spoke about the role of the management and the accounting officer. In this case, you have also explained the, the, the role of the executive authority. What were you expecting? And what is it that you got? Does it meet your expectations? Chairperson, the, the, the role of the executive uh, uh, authority is, um, first of all, to give strategic leadership uh, and then also to exercise oversight. So in the case where there's a negative audit outcomes, uh, we also engage with the executive authority uh, to help the executive authority to understand the audit outcomes. And um, the, the executive authority, uh, we also then make a, a recommendations to the executive authority uh, also to ensure that there's audit action plans uh, and to monitor uh, the execution of those uh, audit action plans uh, to ensure that the performance information is, is, is accurate and complete uh, and to ensure that um, there is uh, consequence management and, uh, and that policies and procedures uh, are adhered to. Um, that is the, the main role of the, uh, the executive authority in this area. Thank you, Chair. Uh, Mr. Lawrence, uh, with respect, you are giving me an academic response. I am saying, give me a response in relation to the findings that you have presented. What were you, uh, we, can, we know what were you expecting. Now, what made you to arrive at the decision that you have arrived at, that which you have reported here? What did you get and what you did not get, which made you to come to this conclusion that you have come to? We don't want something that is, I'm just trying to, to look at what you said. Um, I don't want us to, you said executive authority provided some assurance which means you are satisfied, but not satisfied. Let us not be academic about it. What were you expecting? What is it that you got? What is it that you did not get? Same applies to the accounting officers. Um, uh, the accounting officer we would want to get to know in detail because we can't be making recommendation to the National Assembly when we do not understand. Uh, or we have a partial understanding as to what are the problems. Thank you, Chair. Um, so, Chairperson, then to, to, to be a bit more practical, let's, let's start off with the, with the role of the accounting officer. 
So um, the role of the accounting officer is, is, is defined in the, in, in, in the PFMA. Uh, uh, and then what we would like to see is, is that the accounting officer actually exercise um, those um, uh, requirements of the, of the PFMA, which means that there must be proper systems of financial management in place. Um, and it means that appropriate actions should be taken uh, in any area where there is non-compliance or where um, there is um, not adherence to the to the internal controls, so so that is what one would see want to see from the accounting officer point of view. So when we report through the status of records review or whether internal audit reports or whether we report through the inter management or the final management report, it is then not just about the the the, the um, um, compiling of an action plan but to actually make sure as an accounting officer that that action plan is effectively e executed and then make sure that if that, that, that uh, regular feedback is received and if it's not done, that appropriate action is then taken against the officials who did not ensure that that plan is actually executed. Uh, and then the same goes, uh, in, in, for instance, in the, in the area of performance information, there must be a plan now to to fix the areas in the performance information, and 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 ultimately, um, the, the accounting officer should ensure that those plans are effectively implemented and take appropriate action against the officials if those uh, plans are actually not not implemented. So it also links closely with performance management, uh, uh, for instance. Uh, similar, if we then um, um, look at the at the role of the executive authority. Uh, the executive authority should then um, ask regular feedback from the accounting officer. Uh, and then um, one would like to see that uh, feedback from the accounting officer. Uh, one would like to see uh, what, uh, what agreement is, is, is taken uh, 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 between the minister and the accounting officer. What further actions will the accounting officer take? Uh, what plans are in place, for instance, to fill vacancies? Uh, and, 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 and one would like to see um, evidence of those engagements between the, the executive authority and, and, and the accounting officer. Uh, and um, um, that is um, most probably in practice um, one of the key um, uh, things that one would like to see. Thank you, Chairperson. Now, what do you mean by executive authority providing some some assurance let's be practical we want to and we want to get to the prob, to the bottom of the problems so are you saying that the accounting officer did not provide all of the issues stipulated in the pfma to the executive authority according to 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 you and what does uh, providing some assurance by the executive authority mean in light that the accounting officer did not do such? Uh, Chairperson, what we, um, what we, um, what we think uh, could, could um, change the situation to, to, to one of, of, of providing assurance is uh, when we are able to, to clearly see that um, that the the, the, um, the executive authority uh, helps the um, helps the uh, accounting authority uh, the, uh, the accounting officer to to, to account uh, 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 and also assist him uh, where necessary. For instance, uh, in the case where they, um, there might be a need for intervention uh, by the uh, executive authority, for instance, to fill um, vacant positions. Uh, one would um, what would like to see um, uh, measures um, like that. Thank you. That is what we would want in the future. We are dealing with a report uh, which takes historical accounts. So we are asking you questions based on the historical accounts. You said the executive authority provided some assurance. Now we would like to know Going backwards, what were the issues? We do appreciate the fact that you are also forward-looking, but 
now what is before us is what has already happened. What happened? What do you mean by some and not all? So, so Chairperson, what we what we are basing, basically saying is is that um, uh, if we if we say some assurance, uh, we we believe that there could have been uh, maybe a bit more um, um, uh, oversight from the uh, from the minister in focusing on the on the specific areas uh, that these repeat findings coming from the previous year. Thank you. Thank you. Proceed. Thank you. I will Thank then you. hand over to Mr. Mandolo. Yeah, thanks, thanks Lawrence. Uh, Thank you, Chair. Um, mine is to focus on, on one specific question, Chair. It's a number of questions, but I think they are interlinked. Um, talking to consequence management, where I'll, I'll maybe touch on to what is sitting on the slides, slide, uh, slide number 17 and, and 19, where we indicated that in, in, in one year, um, we will focus on irregular first, that not all cases um, were investigated. And then this year we said inadequate evidence. So on the inadequate evidence chair is this, the department uses a system where they use a, a register to, to compile the cases. Um, there's no specific there's no specific report um, that gives account that uh, um, um, will maybe even in a form of an executive summary as well. And when you get to, into the, the, the register, it does not have um, the key information that enables us to be able to, 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 to select because that's the source. So we're unable to, to see what's the status of the audit. Um, the cases which have not been, there's no status at all, at all whether it has, been, it has been investigated or not, whether investigation has started or it has been completed. Um, so from the reporting point of view, Chair, that's where we still, we still are, are, are at in, in, in this point, where we're not able then to carry through and be able to give an, a, a, an assess, or have an assessment where we're saying for these investigations, you're reporting that you are 20%. We, we, from what we're seeing, we're seeing only maybe 10%. So we're still at the reporting stage. Chair. So our, um, the recommendations which we made to the accounting officer was that we really need to just focus on how we're reporting on our cases to start with. So that's where that's where the, the, the issues we're having, Chair, um, um, this year. And then um, I'm trying to link to the other one. And also, Chair, on 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 these areas, which is mainly around the supply chain and the and the and the um, performance information and consequence management, what we had proposed was that through the processes which we are putting in place to assist the, 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 the accounting officer and, and the department, which is the status of records review, we wanted to come in and be able to, to look at that information, mainly around the, the consequence management, um, supply chain management issues, and also um, and also a, a performance information. So in our status of records review, some of the key things that led to a qualification were not ready for us to, to review. And as well as some in, in the interim, they were still being, being being prepared. So we only managed to to have a look at them in the in, in the final. So that then the department then does not benefit from that uh, from those measures we're trying to put in place in, in as far as the, the areas that are relating to the qualification. Because if we are then if we get the information a little bit ready when we come in for those for those reviews, status of records, and interim, we're able to give them the early signal warnings. I, I guess maybe that could be one of the contributors to to, to also the repeat finding chain. And then I think I think I think Chemine was was all, 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 all on those ones. I don't know if I've adequately addressed the, the questions on on the consequence management in terms of why what is hindering us from being able from being able to verify whether investigations are done, whether investigations are in progress or they are complete. It's mainly due to, to the reporting, Chair. Thank you, Chair. Are you done, Office of the Auditor General? Yes, thank you, Chairperson. Unless there's any other questions, thank you. Thank you very much. There were questions asked by Honorable Self, which we thought that the, some of them were directed at the department. 
Um, the, there are two ways of dealing with this issue. Um, we are at quarter past nine now. Um, members should be preparing to go to the house. Um, we can use this time until half past to hear the preliminary responses from the department, or we can, the department when they present tomorrow, um, they can also incorporate in their response uh, these questions. Should we use the next 15 minutes to get response, some responses from what we have asked uh, from honorable members, which on areas that we directed at the department or should we wait until tomorrow when they present? Chairperson. Honorable Jailer. Honorable Jailer. I think, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Chairperson. If I can make a, a comment or a request uh, on, on the... Yes, thank you, Chair. I think I wanted just to to say something before we, we conclude on the, the auditors. I heard when they were doing responses, I think I was happy for, your, for you to do those follow-up questions because uh, even myself, I was very confused now when, when we, we were getting the responses. Can you hear me, Chair? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, I think uh, from the response, Chairperson, I really got confused. Uh, uh, you helped me with those follow-up questions because uh, I would request that uh, even the auditor's office, when they come and report to us, uh, they must also check their responses because uh, when we ask questions, because I just felt like uh, the responses that we were getting were just giving us a hopeless situation because uh, there was uh, some proposals which were done there, which we believe, one would believe that those things should have been done long ago. We are just uh, oversighting uh, those plans and all that, because I'll make an example, Chair. There's somewhere where uh, the response was saying, uh, we need, they need controls in place, they need more training, they need uh, a, 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 like issues of planning was also, a, 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 also mentioning the issue of uh, management of the contracts. So, and it's not only that one also, also on this issue of the role of the executive, where he was saying a, a basic leadership, basic leadership is needed, you know? So all those uh, issues that were raised, they, they really sketched me. I just felt like we needed to go down to this issue, but now, because of you have uh, asked questions that uh, when departments come here, we need them to report on the actual, exactly the exactly what is happening and give us also the exact situation. And if the situation is gloom, they must just say it up front because we can't be coming every year here and talk about these issues. And uh, when the people who, whom we have assigned to assist us, uh, uh, in terms of uh, 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 those mechanisms of monitoring and and also checking for us, uh, we get such reports. So my request is that when they come and report about this issue, let, uh, let them give us the real situation. Is there any training? Is it helping? Is there uh, are there controls? Are they helping? You know, just be direct to the point so that we are able to deal with this issue issues. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, Honorable Chair. I think we have summarized it very well. Um, um, it reminds honorable, me... Apologies, Honorable Chair. There's a follow-up request from Honorable Wilmer. Yes, I'm coming to Honorable Wilmer. I was just saying to Honorable Chair, I think she has summarized it very well. Um, what we need from the Office of the Auditor General we do not need diplomacy. We need the real state of affairs put in that way. Um, don't try to be diplomatic. Tell us things as they are so that we can understand them. 
you know, in the diplomatic world, you would go to a country and get the West services. But before the meeting starts, everybody will be saying, uh, would like to thank the host for the excellent facilities. It's more of a route. It's just a, a ritual. They will always do that, even if the facilities were, were the worst facilities. So we don't want diplomatic language. We want things to be written in the way as that reflects the state of affairs. I think Honorable Jale captured it very well. Honorable Velma. Thank you very much, Chair. Um, thank you very much, Chair. I just wanted to follow up in terms of clarity from the Office of the AG um, when you responded to my questions about the slides, referring to the slides. Um, the response was that there's a register, that the department keeps a register. So are you saying that the register that the department keeps um, is the register does it not contain does it not contain any information um and you know previously the ag ordered i mean suggested that a register be kept and that was not um or that was the reg that was not implemented um and did perhaps did the accounting officer not benefit also if the accounting officer did not benefit from the AG's uh, recommendation, does that mean that the accounting officer does not know how to follow through the AG's recommendation starting with the, with the register? So I'm not very really clear. I'd like a, a, a more detailed response on what was what the AG expected from this register with the consequence um, uh, yes, what they expected from the register and what they did not receive and results uh, of that and reasons for that. Thank you, Chair. Uh, Honorable Nugut. Chair? Yes. Yes. We couldn't get we couldn't get your last. Uh, are you done? Your last uh, few words. Your words. Last part. Oh, the last few words. Yes. Um. Yes. I'm. I'm done. But the last part was that, in terms of the accounting officer, the AG had said, the accounting officer did not benefit, from the AG's training. So does that uh, mean that the accounting officer did not implement the recommendations previously? Um, you know, for example, did not keep this register that was meant to be kept. Um, so just in terms of that specifically, giving more detail in terms of that, um, what the AG had said. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, AJ. There are two issues from Honorable Jale and Honorable Newwood Drachen. Thank you, Honorable Chairperson. I will ask Mr. Madolo just to give you a bit a bit more detail on on the uh, uh, on the register of investigations. Basically, on a high level, it means that for um, each case of fruitless and wasteful expenditure, and for each case of irregular expenditure, they should be recorded in a register, uh, and then. Um, from there on, there should be information that should enable us to understand um, uh, um, who has been the uh, officials that has been involved uh, in that in regular expenditure. Uh, and then the, in, there should be information on, on, on the investigation. Uh, when was the investigation done? When was the investigation concluded? Uh, when, uh, what was the actual sanction? Uh, and um, if uh, there is a conclusion made that someone cannot be held responsible, that conclusion should also be there. So, so that's basically the starting point of 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 of, of the register that we are uh, that we are talking about. So if you look in in, in the case of the Department of Correctional Services, um, let's take for instance the one billion rands additional irregular expenditure that's been identified relating to this year and the prior. Behind that sits a number of uh, individual transactions, which could be hundreds of transactions, uh, if not thousands. 
So it means that that register actually contains a lot of information. And that is why we need to know per case, what is the actual status of the investigation on each of those cases. But I'll, I'll give to Mr. Madola maybe just to give you more details. Thank you. Okay. Um, may I, Jay? Yes, you, you can. You can. Okay. Thank you, Jay. Um, thanks, Lawrence. I think you, you've, you've largely covered um, the, 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 the concerns. Um, there's also, in, in, in the previous financial year, after, after we reported, Chair, where we said the cases were, were not, were not um, investigated. Those ones were, were, were a little bit easier from, from our side because in, in previously about over 90% over of the cases were cases which were identified by the auditors. So from there, we were able to ask specific questions and say, this one, what has been, what has been done? So now moving forward in this year, when there's, when there's a, a, an, another billion rand which has been added to, to the irregular expenditure to the entire population. So now we then need management to then give us, as Lorenz indicated, to take us to the specific cases. So in, in, in the, if, the, if the register does not allow that, does not move from the individual transaction to, to a, a, a direct link to what is sitting in the register and the status, therefore, it doesn't enable us chair to, to then follow up on, on that. And then it will then get to the investigation files where the investigation files will then link back to the register. So that's, that's, a, that's a trail that we will need to follow from, from our side to verify so that we can be able to come to the, to the committee and say, committee from our verification, we verified so many cases. And out of those cases, we, we, we agree with the status that is reported by the department or we don't agree. So we're unable to get to that point and, and really um, give the committee that sense. Thank you. Um, and I think there, there was a question around the um, the department benefiting from our initiatives. I explained when 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 Mr. Tetsi came in, she explained some of the things that we have, some of the initiatives we have from the office to assist um, the department. So um, my linking to these cases was saying, if if maybe we can have these registers and, and, and these reports may be ready, updated by the department as early as possible when we do our status of records review, when we do our interim, we can be able to then highlight some of the, of, of the hindrances that we have from our side. But if we only interact with those in the final audit, it doesn't, doesn't allow then the, 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 the opportunity for the department to, to maybe correct if they can still correct some of, of the issues. And then if from year to year, then if it, if it then it's not attended to on time, it then, then then the matters just keep on recurring. So I think there's a timing issue, Chair, which the audit department needs to look at to make sure that things are done um, before then we can come in and be able to provide and, and add the necessary value. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chair. Um, thank you very much. Honorable Newbot, are you okay? Are you fine? Honorable Newbold, Honorable Chele, are you, are you fine? Uh, for now, Che, I'm okay. Because the, the, the following questions from what uh, we have just- I think, she's, I think she's fine, but there's a problem with her. Um, yes, Che, there's a network problem that she was freezing, but Honorable okay. Wilma says she's fine. Thank you for the responses. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, Honorable right. Taylor. Yes, Chair. I think uh, from what they've just said now, uh, I think we'll have questions uh, to the department because uh, we are still going to talk to them all. Can I just ask them so that they, they tell us exactly why are they re the registered and report not been given to, to the auditors so that they can go to the bottom of, of, of this issue of, of, of irregular chairperson? And then, and also that one, they will have to give us a report exactly why are these cases not investigated by the department? Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. You know, I think it would be important to, um, I think this one would go both to the Office of the Auditor General if they can, and to our researchers um, uh, for early next year just to get the performance of the department when it was still a standalone department, this Department of Correctional Services, 
what was the performance even with regard to the audit um, a performance and then after 20 i think 2014 when the departments were merged until now uh, if you were to compare the two scenarios what do they give you um, is it still the same has the department improved has the department become worse i'm not sure whether auto general is that possible on your side Yes, Chair, we can go back into the audit outcomes for the last 10 years and we can we can give you a summary of that. That should that should help you. That would be appreciated. Uh, research unit, uh, if you can also do the same, just so that we can be able to assess um, as to whether the whole model is working or not. Um, yes, Chair. Thank you very much. Honorable members, it's half past now, but I must get uh, Honorable James Self. Honorable Self, will you be uncomfortable that if your questions are answered tomorrow when the department presents? No, Chairperson, that's absolutely fine. Uh, but then one would expect the department to come with a degree of specificity uh, Again, like you, I don't want generalized answers. I want specific answers. Uh, and if I can be cheeky and sneak in an extra question, they can come and explain to us why they've released Mr. Andile Lugisa in the Eastern Cape on parole, uh, who's serving a two year sentence for assault. Um, seems to be extraordinary. He's only served about a month at that sentence. Okay, now let's deal with the annual reports. Uh, I think uh, that question would be directed to to the minister and to to the parole board. Um, but I think the acting DG, if he has information, uh, he can attend to that tomorrow. So, honourable members, can we end at this point? Um, I'm just worried that uh, tomorrow. We will just get the presentation of the department and then on Friday we'll adopt the B triple R. Maybe we must we might consider need that uh, a need to meet, let's say, after the sitting tomorrow to have our reflections on the presentations that would have been made by both the department and the aging as to what do we think are the interventions that are needed. But I think let's uh, discuss that tomorrow if there will be a need for that uh, a meeting after the sitting. Because I think from half past nine tomorrow when we adjourn to the house, then we would meet on Friday to adopt the BRRR reports. We wouldn't have reflected properly on the, on the department's performance and what's are we making of what has been presented by both the AG and the department to us? I can we think about it. Maybe we can deliberate on that tomorrow. Agreed, Chair. Thank you very much. Honorable members, uh, the meeting is adjourned until tomorrow, 8 o'clock, um, because of the sittings. Thank you, Chairperson. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chairperson. Thank you very much. Bye, Abor.
same one. Oh, two hours. Ba a bona bachuba. It's after an hour. Can't you do anything after an hour? Oh. Oh. Mm.